In this video, I'll show you how to do a compression test on your motorcycle, and I've got some engine parts to show you so you can get a good visual of exactly what kind of stuff can cause low compression. I'll demonstrate how to do this using my Ninja 300 track bike, but first, a couple things worth noting that need to be right before you get started. First off, you need to have a fully charged battery. You're going to use the starter motor to crank the engine, so if you have a weak battery, you're going to get weak results. You also need to make sure your engine is fully warmed up. Parts inside your engine expand when they get hot, and that's why it's good to have the bike warmed up to get the most accurate results. Bring your bike up to operating temperature, and then you can work towards getting the spark plugs out to install your gauge. If you've got a lot of stuff to remove, try and work somewhat quickly so you can get it apart before the bike cools off too much. I know some people will skip this step because it's inconvenient to work around a hot engine, but it is important if you want the most accurate results. Since you're going to be taking your spark plugs out anyway, if they're due to be replaced, this is a great time to take care of that. If you need any help, I've already made a video all about replacing spark plugs. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description. Now that all the spark plugs are removed, let's take a look at the tool we're going to be using. This is my compression test gauge, and the gauge on this tool reads in pounds per square inch. The gauge connects to one half of the hose, and on the other half is for installing into your spark plug threads. Your tool should come with some different adapters to fit different size threads. If you're not sure exactly what adapter you need, you can compare it to the spark plug you removed and check the threads. You're looking at thread diameter as well as thread pitch. Once you get the correct size adapter selected, now you're ready to install your compression test tool into your engine. Now that your tool is hooked up, all you need to do is press the starter button. This will turn the engine over and the tool will measure how much pressure is built up in the combustion chamber. The whole time you're hitting the starter button, it's very important you hold the throttle wide open. Now, I'm trying to record a YouTube video for you guys while I do this, so out of convenience to keep my hands free, I'm just going to zip tie this throttle all the way open. So even though you will not see me holding it open on camera, trust me, it is open the whole time. Hold the starter button down until the needle on your gauge stops climbing, but no more than about 10 seconds. It looks like cylinder number one has about 200 PSI of compression. I'll go ahead and switch the tool over to cylinder number two and we'll see what this one's got. All right, it looks like cylinder number two is a little less at about 190 PSI. So are these results any good? Well, let's look at the manual to find out. The specs for this bike are anywhere between 162 and 246 pounds per square inch of compression. Now there's another spec related to compression that's not listed in this manual. So let's look at the specs for a different bike to show you what I'm talking about. And that is, there at the bottom, maximum difference between cylinders at 28 PSI. What that means is that even if all your cylinders are within the spec range that they give you, if two or more cylinders have 28 PSI or more between them, that engine would still be considered out of spec. So what can cause low compression in an engine? Some of the most common causes are things like worn piston rings or worn cylinders, valves that are worn out or valve clearances that are way out of spec, or a leaking head gasket. Here's the piston and cylinder off of a different bike to show you what I'm talking about. Here's the piston, and on the piston are piston rings. They're responsible for sealing against the cylinder walls. If they're worn out, you're going to get pressure that escapes past. And same thing for the cylinder. If the walls of the cylinder are worn out badly, the seal between the rings and the cylinder is going to have a loss of compression. One way you can check for this is to do what's called a wet compression test. That's where you pour about a teaspoon of oil down inside and do the test again. The extra oil present will help temporarily seal worn piston rings or worn cylinders and help give you an idea if that's the cause of your problem or not.
what you're checking for is to see if with the oil inside, you get significantly higher readings. If you do, that's a sign that the seal between the rings and the cylinders is part of the problem. Another cause of low compression could be your engine valves. The valve face needs to be in good condition, free of any damage or excessive wear. If the valve is worn out or damaged, it's not going to create a good seal between the valve face and the valve seat. Valve clearances can also be a problem if they're way too tight. Tight valve clearances can mean that even when the valve is supposed to be in the closed position, the camshaft is actually holding it open just slightly, causing it to leak. Last up is a leaking head gasket. The head gasket is the seal between the cylinder and the cylinder head, so if it's leaking, compression is going to be lost. So what about compression that's too high? Well, you're less likely to have this problem, but if you do, carbon buildup could be a cause. Theoretically, if enough carbon were to build up in the combustion chamber, it would reduce the volume and increase the compression ratio. You could also have some aftermarket parts in there if the bike's been modified without your knowledge, such as high compression pistons or a thin head gasket. That about wraps it up for the compression test. The only thing left for you to do is either put your bike back together or take it apart much more, depending on the results you got. But either way, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, be sure to like this video and of course leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and good luck.